Hello everyone. My name is Sutton the Wolf and welcome to Memories Dogma Code 01. I was browsing the shop on Steam and I saw this game in the recent releases. It came out in the, I believe, November and uh, with an alternate edition coming out in early December if I remember correctly. But it looked really cool and so I figured I'd give it a try. As far as I know, this game has to do with the future and memories. That's really all I know about it. Other than that, it looked really, really cool, but I don't know anything else about it. So, I'm just gonna dive right in. Okay, gotta make sure. <laughs> If my perception is something that should belong to me, then that perception is something that must be part of my very being. The visible and the invisible. Okay. Do you still remember, three days ago on this day, what you were doing, who you were with, and where you were? There's practically no one who would be able to answer that if asked on the spot. Human memories are constantly being written and rewritten. Sometimes the order of information gets mixed up, or the events themselves are recorded incorrectly inside the database that is the human brain. It's impossible to tell when memories will be updated or deleted, and it's uncertain whether or not someone's recollection of a certain event is even correct or not. The more one tries to remember, the more they find themselves forgetting, and yet a simple sound, smell, or object could become the trigger to help recall even the vaguest of memories vividly. These collections of memories, a vague amalgamation of information itself, are what allows humans to say with certainty, I am me. Why are you, you? There aren't many things you could say to answer that. My own experiences, the words left behind by long dead men that I've read, the words someone spoke that I then assimilated as my own, a combination of all that is why I think I am me, is the only real answer you could come up with. However, all of these are nothing but your own experiences. The moment information transmitted by someone else is received by you, you filter it through your own perception and it becomes your own experience. Everything becomes assimilated as your experiences and that information then gets recorded as your memories. Then, would that not mean that a person's self is comprised of only their memories? If that really is true, then what about her? As I open my eyelids, I can see the scenery above, my, above me dyed a deep crimson. The faint scent of antiseptic t tickles my nostrils. Antiseptic. I raise my head a little to make sure my body still functions. Hiroki Kusuhara. Okay, are we like in a hospital or something? The first thing that enters my vision is the AR display. A translucent, scre a translucent screen filled with various numbers and words. Next, I can see my body, tucked into some sterile sheets with only my arms poking out of it. My left wrist is wrapped in a white bandage. Hospital, huh? I've seen this scenery many times before. My hazy consciousness slowly starts to grow clear as I recognize the sound of someone clacking away on a keyboard. I look towards the direction of the sound and I see my friend Amamiya Kakeru sitting at my bedside, engrossed in his old laptop. He notices me looking at him and raises his face from the monitor. Yo. Yo. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm using a new camera and microphone, built-in microphone that is, that I got for Christmas. So yay! My video quality should at least uh, go up by a little bit. So no more awkward scenes of me just looking down at the little dinky camera built into my laptop. <laughs> so hooray for that! But alright, I'm looking forward to it. New era. Nanda yo, so no shinkiksai kawa. 
Yes, I hate you very much. I don't know who you are or what you want, but you are to leave immediately. お前はこの病院に搬送されてから。ジーズ。ジーズ。オッケー、ウィブンインハスピタルフォーシックスアワーズ。そうか。アイフェイルアゲン。アイモターズアイステアアットマイベンデージトゥレフトリストリスト一番。ああ。それができてりゃ、ここまでお前との腐れ縁が続いてねえよ。うん。悪かったな。悪いと思うなら、今度線形台数のレポート手伝うよな。リニアアルジェブラ。We <笑> Who's that? I avert my gaze and stare out the window. Oh, pretty. Serrano. Mizunashi Serrano. The girl I'd spent three years of my life with. Last month, she suddenly died. Ooh. Okay, well that explains a bit about the suicide. According to the police, she suddenly jumped out of an alleyway and into a passing car near Fuchu Park. Ever since I heard the news, I've tried cutting my wrists multiple times. Jeez, that's dark. I simply pressed down on my left wrist. Holy shit. I put more pressure into the hand that's pressing down. I feel a slight sensation of pain run through my body. Doing this lets me feel at least a little closer to Sorano. Kakadu continues to stare continues staring at me for a bit and then suddenly touches his left wrist. Not because he cut his wrist like me, but to start up his MRD. What's an MRD? Oh, hello. Mobile Augmented Reality Device, or MRD for short. It's the latest model of portable terminals. Ooh. Looks like a bangle, so you can wear it on your arms. Oh yeah, I forgot this is in the future. We're like 2030. Awesome. You can use it to listen to music or kill time playing mobile games, but using AR virtual holographic display to surf the web or call people are its primary functions. Oh, okay. The National Identification System was abolished two years ago, so all personal information managed by your MRD as well. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that. You can also use it to make electronic payments at convenience stores, train stations, and the like. And it also serves as identification to get into certain facilities, or when you need proof of identity to request certain services. Wow, just on that small thing. There's almost no one in Japan today who doesn't have one. What's up with the... what the... hello? Huh? Oh, okay. So a little blue... Okay, database. Okay, so little blue text things can be clicked on as data. Okay. The only people who walk around fold laptops like Hakadu are enthusiasts, or people who need one from work. Huh, so computers are like almost obsolete? Shit. An AR display showing a website pops up in front of me. Whoa, really? Okay, so what I'm getting from this is that whenever you die, they like 
take your memories and they like keep them as a database and so you can like I I'm gonna guess that means you can like I'm gonna guess that means you can like go through all these archives and like I don't want to say communicate with them but like I don't know that that sounds really cool I don't know exactly what to think about but yeah The Connect Center. The chain of events that led to its founding are, in some sense, a dark chapter in our history. Jeez, it's gonna get even darker. Three years ago, a certain university's research succeeded in electronically transcribing and preserving a person's memories using a technology called e-memory. I can look at the database later. This should have been a groundbreaking invention that would have helped humanity greatly in their daily lives. However, contrary to expectations, e-memory started being used for criminal purposes. Ooh. For example, some people used it to electronically copy a person's memories without permission, and then to spy on their lives. Then that information would be sold to people with more perverse motives for their entertainment. People who found enjoyment from such things realized that there was nothing else that could compare, and sought after even more stimulating memories. In the end, the worst thing imaginable ended up happening. What, did people start murdering each other with memories? People were kidnapped and subjected to violent acts, and their memories of that experience were uploaded onto the internet. Oh, shit! Oh, God, that is horrible. It was an event that came to be called the Nightmare Memory Incident. Ooh. Can you imagine just being, like, totally, like, ki not, not just kidnapped and, like, either raped or assaulted or something, but then forced to, like, view that on the internet and possibly even, like, like, ugh. like, if, can you imagine having to view that in, like, a VR setting? Oof. No way. The ringleaders behind this atrocity were arrested, but the government took a hard stance after this incident and made the copying of living humans' memories illegal. Good reason. Then, after trying to find a solution to make the e-memory safe and useful, the government created a facility to store the memories of dead people. The Connect Center. At the Connect Center, you can access the memories of the dead and speak with them. Oh, okay, I was kind of right. You can hear the voices of your dead family, friends, and loved ones. Whoa. So. Oh, they only keep them for 49. Why? Why would they only keep them for that short of time? Like, I. Oh god, that just feels like they'd be dying twice. Digitum. God, this guy must be going through like... Oh man, I don't know how- I don't- I love the idea of being able to talk with someone after they've passed on, like talking to their memories, but like... I feel like if whenever they digitum, I'm gonna use the vocabulary there. I feel like that's just like a second death, and that's just even harder on people. Like, you not only have you lost the person, now you like you. It's almost like losing them a second time. That's rough. Digituming of memories. Simply put, it's just deleting the data. In other words, the government's basically telling the people left behind that they have this long to get over it. Oh shit. Oh, we haven't even gone to Seer? Oh, man. So, what do you think about it? Oh, man. Oh, man. I can sort of understand why someone would, like, be hesitant to go, because, like I said, it, it's kind of like a second death, so people may not want to subject themselves to the. People may not want to subject themselves to seeing them after they've passed because they know that they're going to pass, like, almost pass again figuratively. Hesitation. Why didn't I stop Sarano back then? Why did I let her die? I still can't forgive myself, even now. Ignoring me, who's gone silent, Kakadu stretches his hand towards my pillow and stops at my MRD, which is laying on the bedside table. He picks it up and places it before me. Oh, 
This guy seems like a good friend. He's like come in here and he's like trying to convince convince us to go do the right thing. I hesitate for a bit, but I eventually reach out and take my MRD back from Amamiya. I'm not sure if I was fortunate or not, but while I was unconscious, they'd been pumping food into my stomach and had me on an IV. So even though I was still out a bit out of it, sneaking out of the hospital didn't prove very difficult. The Connect Center here in Tokyo is only a short walking distance away from Fuchu Station, the station closest to here. It seems that there was a grand opening ceremony for it when it opened two years ago. It's about a 30 minute walk from the hospital I've been taken to. For a while now, I haven't even taken note of things like the outside temperature. Until just a while ago, me, Kakeru, and Sarano all used to walk down this street. I absentmindedly continued to reminisce about the past, about the time before I met Kakeru and Sarano. Alright, well this seems like a decent place to cut off, guys. Alright, new series! This is looking interesting. It's a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. Holy shit. But that's so cool, though. Like, honestly, the idea of having memories whenever, like, your memories staying, even for 49 days, staying after you pass away so that others can talk to you, that is such a cool concept. Like, that's really unique. I've never heard of that. But regardless, I'm going to get more into this. And so there will be more episodes of this coming out. Don't worry. Um, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel below. All that stuff really does help me out as a YouTuber. And I will see you guys next time on Memories Dogma.